This is me, uh, Dr. Farhan. Um, I welcome all of you in this particular session. And what else do I have to say? Yes, in my previous six attempts of UPSC, don't look at me like a failure, okay? In my six attempts and four mains and two interviews, there are lots of experiences that I have to share. I teach in Delhi and in Hyderabad, some of the known institutes, and I get this opportunity to interact with you in today's part. So before we begin about this session, introduction to sociology, there are some basic types of interactions that I would want to make with you. Are all of you comfortable with the language what I'm using? Are you able to understand? If you're not understanding something, just kindly let me know. I'll repeat it. Uh, I did not have anything for my breakfast. So if I'm not audible, I'll repeat once again. So let's not, let's not just talk about sociology as an optional subject. Let's talk about UPSC. Today's session, I am going to divide it into two parts. One part is somewhere about UPSC. The other part is about the optional subject. I'm going to divide it something like this, 25% and 75%. Before we talk about this optional subject, it's more important that I get to know what do you know about UPSC? How do you feel about being a UPSC aspirant? Some of the basic questions that I'm going to ask. <coughs> so, yeah, like in every class, whenever a new lecturer comes, he is trying to make some sort of an interaction. I will make that once again with you. Why UPSC? Yes, tell me sir. Why do you want to make, why do you want to do UPSC? This is not working? Okay. Yes. Why UPSC? Okay, it's your childhood dream. Is there any specific reason apart from the childhood dream? May I know your good name? Aditya. Aditya. Yes, Aditya. Any, any specific purpose? Okay. Okay, something happening in the society and you want to make reason. Yes, sir. Any other reason? Why do you want to do civil services? Yeah. Bala. My father is a civil servant. So you want to do because your father did? No. Yeah. It's a good career. Uh, it's a good you get a lot of different opportunities to serve the society. Something like that? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Any reason? What's your good name, sir? Um, Rai. No, no, your good name. Rai. Rai. Do you have a nickname, brother? You can just put one, sir. Rai? No. Rai Durg? Rai Yudu. Rai Yudu. Rai Yudu. Cool name. Yes, ma'am. Any specific reason why UPSC? Not very specific per se, but. Uh, yeah. Because I've seen that nobody is taking me very seriously at home. I will do civil services. Somebody will take me seriously. Or at least the husband will take you very seriously. Something like that. Maybe. Yes. yes. You don't want to go with the normal thing. Okay. So you want to be a little bit powerful in the society. Maybe. No, no. Totally fine. Absolutely okay. What's your good name? Sahaja. Sahaja. See, simple name. Okay, fine. <laughs> Sahitya. Sahitya. Sorry, sorry. Sahitya. Yes. Yes, sir. What do you want to do civil services? Uh, it's my childhood dream and the inspiration that I got from the officer who is serving in pink and place. Okay. So, you have an inspiration from your native place. It's a childhood dream. Two pretty strong reasons. What's your good name? Gone Mai. Gone? Gone Mai. Gone Mai. Yes. Gone Mai. That's a cool name. Raidu Gone Mai. That, that, I love that diversity. Yes, ma'am. Any reason? Uh, I think something similar to what my friend here said, uh, the day-to-day -day experiences that I've been seeing. Okay. So you want to bring some change in the society. Exactly. Yes. What's your name? Isha. Isha. Yeah. Sweet. Yes. I like the power of civil service. Power of civil service. Straight and forward. Yes, ma'am. Any reason? I think uh, we can do what we want better than we have. 
okay whatever resources that you are having you can do a little bit better she gave two three sentences in short she was like you get the power yes yes sir it is unique in nature why is why do you think it's unique in nature because uh, we have uh, we have generations what we know in present okay generations will remember us okay generations so you want you have like my dada ji was an ias officer something like that yeah not like that That's sir it can be sir no problem yeah, 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 if somebody wants to do it for power why do you want to take it in a negative terms see if you are being a powerful person do you think a politician is a powerful person yes he is is he working for the good of the society yes he gets an opportunity a bureaucrat a politician a celebrity these people are powerful people do not take the word power in negative term you can bring a change in the society so you want to be remembered for your generations and he wants to see that his statue is there in his native place so okay fine any other reason sir inspiration inspiration fine all of you might be having some of the other reason why do you want to do upsc and something is there within your mind it is personal to you maybe you have shared it with me maybe you have not shared it with me okay in this class everybody has got their own personal reasons maybe some inspirational bollywood or tollywood movie they have seen and at that moment they decided yes i want to be that race gurram something of that sort so anyways my telugu is not that good but some movie could have inspired you or your parents might have inspired you the most fundamental part when you are doing civil services is a central question that i want to highlight as why do you want to do civil services this is the most important thing i am not highlighting okay there is one optional subject which is more important there is one general studies which is more important which age you are in what background do you have which place do you belong to what is your iq level all of that is not important the most central part of civil services is you should know why you are doing this particular if you have that clarity you are going to be there for a longer because your preparation is going to be like this it's going to be like a wave sometimes you are doing pretty good sometimes you are off the track sometimes you don't know what you are doing sometimes you don't even feel like opening the book you question yourself do i even deserve this am i doing the right thing should i get married something of that sort so you are having different if this is pretty important if this is concrete you are going to go further ahead what comes next next comes the part of how how are you going to do it warren buffett one of the big financial investors one of the richest person he said in his speech that an idiot with a plan is much better than a genius without a plan so question yourself do you want to be that idiot with a plan or do you want to be that genius with no plan idiot is much better so how you are going to do it you need to have a plan a proper pathway how are you going to do it what are the problems that you are going to face all of you are graduate maybe in final year of graduation or all of you have done graduation maybe you are pursuing your job or something of that sort how are you going to do it did you make one year plan what are the problems that you are going to have you are going to have financial pressure you are going to have pressure from your parents to earn more you are going to have a pressure why not do a masters degree why not do a post graduation you need to get married there are different different problems everyone is having you need to have a plan how are you going to do it who is going to be a mentor how are you going to perceive it so how is more about the plan and the last part what we are having is what you are going to study for this so what are the subjects that you are going to study what are the things that you have to go through which newspaper etc all of that comes in the last part so what is the least most important thing in my opinion that you need to like if you take my example I don't like economics but still I had to study economics I don't like one particular subject but still I had to do that so the reason is even if you don't like something now in your UPSC preparation is there any subject that you don't like which you find boring don't tell me sociology 
okay polity you don't like okay any subject that you don't like till now yes yes i do any subject that you don't like nothing, nothing. okay but there must be some subject that you feel little bit distant than other subjects like i want to be the genius yes okay equal distance from all. any other subject that you don't like you like all the subjects oh my god this class seems to be like a super intellectual class okay fine i don't like one subject it is not possible that you like all the subjects okay either you are not getting the subject or there is some sort of problem i'm not going, i'm not going to take that fact so some subject that you don't like imagine it is economics for all of you or polity or history but even if you don't like that subject are you going to study it are you going to study that subject even if you don't like yes you are going to study why because you have an ultimate goal upsc that you want to crack it and you are going to reach there so the thing is that your why needs to be so stronger that you are going to dominate on that what so what are you going to study in your upsc anybody who has given prelims this year okay all of you are newbies okay one thing in this particular session i am going to treat all of you like you don't know anything about upsc or you are very basic to it so i am going to cover some of the fundamental aspect when you are covering what in upsc what are the things that you have to go through upsc is there how many stages do we have in this exam you are having three stages one two three the first stage is what we have got is prelims the second stage is what we have mains and then you have got the personality test or simple words we call that as interview there are five subjects that we focus when we are talking about prelims what are the five subjects yes ma'am any subjects okay we are having five subjects that we focus one is polity geography environment history any other my favorite subject yeah economics okay economics plus you have got the current affairs of all the subjects science and tech current affairs is like one and the same so whenever you are studying for prelims this is how the paper is going to be divided polity geography environment history economics all of this with current affairs this is preliminary part and in the mains we have got multiple subjects to deal with we have got gs1 what are the subjects that we have in gs1 history society and okay we have got history society and geography this is 250 marks what else after that gs2 you have what do we have in gs2 polity polity governance international relationships that's gs2 in gs3 economy environment science and technology anything else yes good internal security what? disaster management so you have got five basic sub parts the most complex out of all the subjects we have got gs3 this has got more number of parts three parts three parts five parts what are having in gs3 gs4 is it's about the ethics integrity aptitude emotional we have got gs4 over here and then you have got the optional subjects that you deal with so more over here you have got one essay paper which i don't want to talk about so this is something what you have in the mains and then personality test is what youtube videos isn't it whenever you open youtube as soon as you open some sort of a video or some shots like some guy who is sitting like this and he like super intelligent he gives such fabulous answers like wow how did he say all this so interview this is the most difficult and the most easiest part there is no way that you can prepare for interview you are preparing for interview every day that kind of a paper it is personality test it's more about an interaction that you get to see in the interaction roughly about 1 hour in my interviews it was somewhere around 45 the next interview was somewhere around 38 to 40 minutes so it's less than an hour sort of an interaction which you make with a panel and you give them a very strong idea what kind of a person you are and to be honest the panel is so qualified the panel is so intellectual that it is 
hardly 5 minutes that they can judge a particular candidate 45 minutes is like hell lot of a time to judge somebody so this is the last part that you are having so upsc this are the stages multiple choice questions written exam vocal exam so we have got three different parts within the case of your speaking about the subject optional yes the optional what we are going to talk about over here is sociology so yes tell me something about the subject why should anybody be opting sociology anybody who has decided that they want to go with the subject yes don't worry i'm not going to pull your leg or what yes anybody yes so okay what do you understand by this word called as sociology study of society very nice anybody know the password yes they can you just call yes. <laughs> yes sociology means study of society very nice anything else have you seen your grandmother she gives you some sort of a stories some sort of an inspiration all of you have seen your grandparents giving you some type of stories and inspiration so do you think she is also trying to explain you something about the society just now you have told me sociology means study of society your parents your grandparents the religious books where you are reading excuse me the religious books that you have been reading in some way or the other they are also trying to teach you something about the society so the definition of sociology is not study of society the literal meaning is scientific study of society the word scientific is pretty much important over there because you are going to make an explanation about the society based upon logic rationality observation experimentation objectivity so there are some four five words that i have used in those i am trying to say that i am explaining the society but i am going to do that in a scientific manner so the definition of sociology is the scientific study of society that is one so before we speak about the definition <coughs> i would like to first make some quotes why should any person choose sociology as their option now there are two types of answers that you are going to give it to me or you might be thinking one is general answers non upsc centric answers what do you mean by general answer sir if i read this subject i will be able to understand the society more better if i understand the society more better i can be a more good administrator i will try to solve the problems i can be that nayak of society there in hindi there is a movie called as nayak which i very much like and that telugu movie of that is uh, there was a guy who was like a one day cm what was that movie name uh, something okay okudu yeah. yeah this guy was like a one day cm has anybody seen that movie okay okudu yeah so what this story is about is this guy is a journalist he is talking to the chief minister he is telling you promised this you promised that in your 5 years of tenure you did not do why you did not do so the cm says back that do you think it is so easy to be a chief minister you become chief minister for one day he becomes a chief minister for one day and he is trying to bring a change in the society so the thing is that if you understand a society will you be able to bring a change like okay okudu and that answer is absolute nonsense this movie was an absolute nonsense you cannot bring a change like how he is bringing in the end in that okay okudu like there was one suggestion box the end of the movie is that there are no complaints in the suggestion box one flower will come lies like this like this like this it will come and fall 
there are no complaints in the society we are having a happy ending society so such society cannot exist we cannot have such kind of a society so looking at that part why to choose oh my god this laptop is from 1988 i guess we cannot wait for a 30 seconds reel how can we wait for 1 minute for something to open when the reel gets little bit longer we are not able to open and digest it so i think it's in between five minutes it is yeah. adobe adobe i should have told me before no yes yes so <clears throat> some of the questions more centric to this is why should you be choosing this particular option and the first important reason is the shortness of the syllabus now like sir why is the syllabus so short the first and the most important reason is the time when the subject was brought into existence since when do you think sociology is there as a subject just make a wild guess since when are we studying about sociology as a subject yes sahiti yes since bc yes isha same same answer bc okay like no, no same sorry same answer like like this there should be no discussion yes sir since when are we studying bc yes sir, i do be a little bit different no no you have to be a little bit different tell me no clue yes see even if you have got no clue have you seen kbc kbc kon banega karodpati the telugu version of that nagarjuna brings right yeah like whenever you are sitting like whenever you are preparing for upsc i'll tell you what happens when the kbc is coming everybody is sitting there but you are sitting something like this whatever they are asking if nobody knows an answer right everybody will look at you you are preparing for upsc right you will give the right answer somehow you will get it right two three times you get it right no pressure will come from your parents beta why don't you try for kbc at least you will get some money to home so okay any other reason when do you think the subject might come might have come if you see the first subject that comes into existence is the subject of history we have been studying the subject from thousands and thousands of years in the form of arts in the form of paintings manuscripts writing etc so history is there from thousands of years political science modern political science machiavelli is responsible for that we are studying from past 600 years we are studying science modern science from past 400 to 500 years if you look the subject sociology it has been emerged as an academic discipline the way we are studying it from 1850s only from past 150 years we are studying the subject called as sociology before that there was no subject only called so this is a pretty new subject why did it started to come in 1850s we'll talk about that later on but the subject matter of sociology came only 150 years this is what and this is something in regard to western society in india it is there only since independence from 75 years we are studying the subject do you know when was the father of indian sociology died he died 15 years back so the father of indian sociology died 15 years back he was a freedom fighter so indian sociology 75 years western sociology is there for 150 years so the reason why the syllabus is short because the subject was introduced very lately that is one reason so shortness of the syllabus that's one important reason the second important reason is something considered to be as the overlap loop what do you mean by that term overlap loop means you are studying something for your general studies you are going to use that in the case of sociology paper like one of the books which i would be recommending for you to go through is spectrum all of you have read spectrum if you want to read history you have to read bipin chandra no you have to read spectrum that is i don't recommend traditional books go with the shortcuts spectrum is something what is being recommended so spectrum you are going to use it over here as well the first chapter 
that you're having in polity, historical background, you're going to use that over here. Environmental studies. So, overlap loop means in every other mains paper, some part will be used for your sociology optional. For example, you have got GS1. In GS1, you are not going to separately study Indian society. What is the reason for that? You know, because paper 2 is already going to cover that. So, there is an overlap with the Indian society. If you are doing GS2, there is a topic called as poverty, hunger, social issues. You are going to cover that. Social issues. In the case of GS3, you are having a part of agriculture. You are having some top topics in the case of economy. You are having some parts from the geography as well which you will be covering up that in the in the case of GS4 we will be talking about some values those values what we cover in the case of paper 1 are being covered over here something related to integrity something related to should you be intelligent should you be emotional we are supposed to be emotionally intelligent emotional intelligence that's a topic in your GS4 that you are going to have an overlap in this way, the overlap loop is telling the subject that you are going to cover for your mains preparation, GS123, is having an overlap with your sociological preparation. That's the next reason is to look into the concept of score statistics. If you look at the toppers, scores and everything, there are few optional which are considered to be more scoring one. Sociology, Anthropology, History, Geography, these are the mainstream optional subjects. The people why they are inclined, even though we have got engineers who are coming up, they are not going into the subjects of the engineering options what we are having. People who are coming up from medicine, they are not taking medicine as an option, like my option itself. It was supposed to be medicine if you take the logic of graduation, but it has gone into some of the direction. There are some 5 to 6 mainstream optional subjects and the reason why people are opting towards this, this is one of the scoring areas. People get 300 plus even though they are having low scores in their mains part but over here we have seen aspirants crossing 320, 310, 300 plus. That's a phenomenal score. So if you are getting a good score, score statistics is something that is more important. One more important reason is, if you look, one of the shortest syllabus that you are having of an option is Sanskrit. But why people would not take Sanskrit? What is the reason for that? So, just liking a subject is also not important. If you are opting towards a language or any optional, you have to see that if I want to study that subject, do I have enough amount of material assessment? Do I have enough amount of resources that we get to see? If you do not have one stop solution, if you do not have three, four books, but rather multiple books, if the syllabus is very much scattered, you don't know how you are going to cover that syllabus. So one important reason what we get to see is that you are having enough amount of material. You open YouTube, you are having lots of videos to cover up. You open telegram, you have got resources to read when it comes to the notes, etc. Topper notes, books, resources, YouTube videos, all of this is something considered to be as the material assessment. Means you can read about that subject on multiple different platforms. That is also one of the strong reasons. The next important reason, this is very important to me, is high subjectivity. What do you mean by this word? High subjectivity. Now in the photo, what I have put up is one particular number. This person is telling that it is 6. This is what he is seeing from his view. And the person on the other side, he is seeing it as 9. What the point that I want to make over here is that this subjects provide you your opinion freedom. This subject provides you an opportunity. No person is right and wrong in sociology. Everybody is right because they are looking at the society from their own view. So, the scientific study of sociology is all about you are telling how you are seeing the society. I cannot come and say that you are looking at it is wrong. You understood? 
you have got your own freedom to express you have got your own opportunities to say this is how i see the society high subjectivity means you have got something your own opinion freedom you get an opportunity to express what is it about the society so to just recall what are the important areas why people are opting basically one of the reason is the syllabus is short second there is an overlap loop what you are having score quite in favor material assessment high subjectivity opinion freedom high subjectivity basically this is more about the variability that we are having means there are lots of variation opinion freedom is an individual choice so here there is lots of diversity people are coming up with different different views opinion freedom means you get an opportunity for example i shouldn't be saying this if you take geography as one of the subjects very good subject i'm not here to comment on geography but can you give your own explanation to how continents are created there is one theory called as alfred wegener theory in geography how the continent has been created some jigsaw puzzle if you see africa or south america they come like a puzzle there is a theory in geography can you have your own opinion on that i i believe that this is wrong i believe this is how the world was created do you have that opportunity if you are doing research and development there you will have it but as an optional subject in geography you cannot have your own opinion in geography you cannot have your own opinion when it comes to history but when it comes to arts when it comes to sociology you can have your own opinion freedom so high subject of opinion freedom basically this is an opportunity to show your personality have you seen the editorials in the hindu newspaper have you ever seen the editorials in the hindu newspaper what is it all about that writer he is trying to explain this is the reason why the covid 19 somebody is telling covid 19 came because of chinese chinese people somebody is telling no america people american wanted to stop the chinese economy that is the reason some people are saying we ate a bat that is how it came somebody is saying it came from a natural process of evolution multiple theories are there because you are having an opinion freedom you can keep different options so these are some of the reasons why sociology exist to take this further more ahead i am not here to give a definition of what do you mean by society i just want to ask you what do you mean by society yes sir what do you mean by the word society this try to be be very simple as possible yes ma'am can you tell me what do you mean by society just this, i'm i'm not looking for any definition i'm just telling what what is there in your mind when the word comes society Okay, people coming together in the form of culture, etc. Good attempt. Yes, sir. Anything that comes up in your mind when I am telling the word society, am I also there in your picture of society? All the. First tell me, no. First tell me, am I there or not? Yeah. Yeah. See, thank you so much. Yes. Yes. All the people. Living in India with a sort of norm. I I don't live with I don't live with you, but yes. You do live partly, but yes. So you are telling. all the all the things all the people who are staying together that means society yes sir what do you mean by the word society different mindsets, different mindsets. good people coming from different mindsets anything living together. living together 
okay anything apart from living together society is a more broad term just living together will not make it to be a society did you like kgf2 no did you like kgf1 you are not into films bahubali did you like it's not a film it's a masterpiece <laughs> yes <coughs> so do you think do you stay with prabhas and rajamouli but do you think that's a part of society i just fun around yeah so do you think the the entertainment industry that you watch do you think that's a part of society yes it's a part just living together is not the criteria you don't stay with narendra modi but he is a part of your society so society is more of a broader picture now let me ask you uh, one more question this might be personal but tell me about your schedule what do you do yes ma'am what do you do since when you get up from your sleep what do you do wake up wake up freshen up freshen up breakfast breakfast study study attend classes study attend classes study again study again eat and sleep eat and sleep okay so study eat sleep okay what do you do sir when you get up in the morning anything can you be a little bit more specific yes and i specific i don't mean like too specific like yes i freshen up that's the that's the story done so what what more do you do anything else also interact with people interact with people okay anything more that you do okay how many of you you have got a small puja room in your room if you are staying in your house that this is a small area whatever you might believe or you what you don't believe but there is small area that you have kept for religion right before the exam something or the others you just take a look at that it gives you a sense of emotional relief like okay fine i have done that part now i'm going to go for my exam or in the morning some sort of a tilak that you did some sort of a prayer some sort of a cross or whatever you have started your day in your whole day religion takes up a small part you agree or you disagree it is there i am talking about an indian society religion will takes some part of it and what i am going to do right now is i want you to tell what do you mean by the word society how do you start your day one part is you might be doing something like a nice ramdev baba asan this is something which becomes a part of your culture this becomes a part of your culture i can say this is something which is a part of tradition it is something which is inspired even from religion as well <clears throat> all the three terms are different from one another but over here i am using it like a synonym one and the same culture tradition religion you try to devote yourself towards these three parts then <clears throat> you start your day you make up your breakfast then you buy the hindu newspaper you open it up and then you are trying to read a particular news you are trying to read okay narendra modi he is wearing a nice sherwani he is wearing a nice kurta pajama because whenever i am looking at narendra modi i make sure i look at what he is wearing every time he has got an amazing outfit so he wears a good kurta pajama he has got that sadri jodhpuri style do you think narendra modi wear good clothes yeah. absolutely he does that he is supposed to represent india in a good way so you read the newspaper <coughs> at that time you are trying to build an opinion on the politics so you are also the part of the political system i am trying to build an image of what do you mean by society you belong to religion you belong to the political system one day you vote one day you build an opinion what is happening in the country is it good for the economy it is bad for the economy etc you build <coughs> you are going to educational institutions you study hard you are trying to focus you are trying to see the what needs to be done so you are belonging to the educational institution as well so over here this is not the photo okay but you are studying day and night hard so you are trying to be a part of educational system as well you are trying to see what is there so education is also one of the forms of institutions then 
you have got the money where do you spend money you go to a canteen you buy a cup of tea you buy a cup of coffee for you for yourself so you are the part of economy as a system as well the world society is nothing but cluster of different institutions what do you mean by the word society one point of time we see that you are one individual this is you you are one individual and around you are different different institutions these institutions are telling you that you take up one role for example right now you are playing a role as a student i am playing the role as a lecturer this is what this institution is all about in this particular place there are some rules and regulations this is education as an institution so society means a cluster of different institutions with rules and regulations you are playing that role of an education as soon as i am gone out of this room you leave that role and you will take the role of a peer group as a friend or somebody who belongs to this place you are going to interact you are going to keep your leg on that other chair and then you like what a boring lecture this guy has given or i i did not have idli in my breakfast he was asking me again and again so i told i had idli something of that sort so one institution is education another institution is playing the role of a peer group in the morning time the small puja room that you are having at your place that is the role of religion you are playing the role of a devotee at that particular place you have a certain opinion when it comes to political system you are done with the institution today you go to your home over there you are playing the role of a son of a daughter wife husband whatever that is nothing but family that is there as an institution that we get to see you are playing the role as a customer you are making a business you are belonging to economy as an institution you are becoming a part of technology as well so the word society it means cluster of institutions where there are certain rules and regulations which becomes so these are nothing but different different institutions everywhere you are playing a certain role and there are some expectations from you society means cluster of institutions with certain rules and regulations <clears throat> that is what the society is so speaking about the syllabus that we have within sociology this is the syllabus what we are having up before we talk about the syllabus i want to say that there are certain ways how the sociology as a subject was invented for example aditya he has got one perspective to see the society he is telling this is how i see the society sahiti is telling this is how i see the society everybody is having their own perspective and i am telling everybody is right nobody is wrong everybody can have their own perspective in this way can i create some subject matter if everybody is having their own perspective can i create some common subject matter i cannot create so what did the sociology do is they have created some fundamental scientist these are called as the sociological contributors for example if you want to read physics you cannot read physics until and unless you don't know what newton is telling you cannot read physics until and unless you don't know what albert <coughs> einstein is telling like every subject they have got some scientific person in that same way sociology has also got some contributors these are those people who are called to be as sociological contributors sociological philosophers in simple term they are called to be as thinkers now aspirants they come and ask sir there are 40 thinkers there are 50 thinkers how many do we have to study the answer is don't ask me open the syllabus take a look at that there are only six thinkers that you are having in the sociology these are the six thinkers that we are having why do we study six thinkers is because these 
six people are looking at society in a different different perspective first person is the karl marx all of you have heard about that guy karl marx from your school times how do you remember karl marx communism russia that comes up in your what else do you recall with karl marx favor of labor people favor of labor people anti capitalist karl marx is seeing the society in a one way how is he seeing the society everybody is under a problem at everybody is fighting with another the rich is fighting with the poor the man is fighting with the women capitalism is fighting with the communism two countries are fighting and the reason why they are fighting it is because of money money is the biggest problem so karl marx is one of the earlier thinkers within the case of sociology he is not a sociologist the reason why we cover karl marx is because he is trying to create a new society so karl marx his perspective is called to be as conflict perspective means he is seeing that people are fighting with another that is because of money we'll talk in detail what karl marx is karl marx is one of the thinkers emil durkheim he is also a thinker a french sociologist he is a very optimistic person somewhere the floods will come he is going to say floods are good why because with floods soil will come agriculture will be good can you see that over optimism this is what emil durkheim is he is trying to create positive outlook even out of the worst situation covid pandemic good or bad according to durkheim he is doing it is good because of covid pandemic only i became close to my 10th friends our relatives got closer to each other we were able to help the poor people we have done some good charity can you see that people became more scientific they were believing before they used to believe in natural medicines now they got inclined towards scientific medicine as well in this way covid 19 is good that is what durkheim is this view of the society when you are too optimistic too positive that is called to be as functionalist i am just giving you an idea what exactly these thinkers they are trying to be different weber he is a very important person in politics important person in economics but more of that he is a sociologist what weber is telling is that in society you see people like this group of people what weber is saying no they are not existing like this they are individuals people are not there as clusters even in religion if you see people are together no they are divided they are present as an individualistic weber is called as an individualist this guy is called as collective functional etc parson he is seeing that for example do you see religion and political system is different do you think religion is different political system is different in class if i am talking about religion you will say sir religion is a personal thing we are here to talk about education let's talk about education will you say that or not you see education is different political system is different religion is different parson is telling no all the institutions all the institutions that what we have just highlighted they are not separated all of them are connected like a structure if you look at a building one pillar is attached to a column that column is attached to another pillar all of the things are connected to one another parson is telling society if you want to understand you have to look at like a structure it is called as structuralist this is the his perspective murder is telling the society is evolving with the help of technology there are new new things that are coming up before your parents had a problem with wifi now they are not having problem with wifi do you remember before parents used to say keep the smartphone away from your head radiations will come have you ever heard of those those things keep the smartphone away don't use it now you are seeing that your parents are itself addicted to smartphone isn't it morning time family group will be there in that between two mountains one sun will come uncle will send no between two mountain one sun will come good morning 
Uncle will also say and again 5 o'clock, tree is there, bird will come and say good evening. Have you seen those kind of WhatsApp messages? Technology is changing the relationship. Uncle will also fight if he sees the blue tick. You will not reply in that family group, no. He will say, beta, I have messaged you. Why you did not reply to that my message? So, blue tick is also creating a problem. Technology is changing. So, this guy is called as a neo-functionalist. He is also called to be as <coughs> middle range sociologist. He is telling how the society is evolving into new, new concepts. That is called. This guy is called to be as symbolic interactionist. What I am giving you a brief picture is, if you are reading maths, there are some math scientists. If you are reading some physics, there are some physics scientists. If you are reading sociology, there are some thinkers that you have to... All these thinkers are looking at that same society from different, different angles. This guy is saying, problem is there every time, conflict is. Durkheim is telling, everything is happening in a good way, functionalist. Weber is telling, every individual is controlling his own society. Individualist, everything is connected, structuralist, everything is evolving, new, everything is present in the form of symbols, shapes, and that's how we interact, symbolic interaction. So these are the thinkers. So what do we have? The syllabus within the case of sociology. Five, six, seven, eight, ten. Can you read in the top? Cerebus. Are you able to read in that? Okay. Cerebus paper one. So, okay, tell me what your grandfather, have you seen your grandfather? No. Have you seen your grandfather? What did your grandfather used to do? You can create some story, I'll, I'll talk on that also. Shop. He was a shopkeeper. Okay. Do you know about your great grandfather? You don't know. So, do you know about your great grandfather? What did he used to do? They went to agriculture. They went to agriculture. Good. What was your grandfather into? Agriculture. Your father? He was into agriculture, he changed his stream. Your father was also into agriculture? No, my father is in, he's into civil services. You are you want to be into civil service. Now taking the example of Raidu, he is telling his great grandfather, his grandfather were into agriculture. His father, in one generation only, he has shifted into civil services. Now he also wants to get into that service. Now I can at least ask you this question, what your grandfather used to do. 400 years back, everybody was into agriculture. If you look at the society 400 years back, what did the people used to do? They had a rural kind of a lifestyle. They were into agriculture or they were into cottage industry, some textile or something of that sort. But what happened is, in the span of 400 years, people started to get lots of opportunities. When it comes to economic activity, 400 years before that, everybody was into agriculture, now we have diversity. Economic diversity came. 400 years back, religion was not an option. Today's time, we have religion as an option. I can ask you, are you a religious person or are you not a religious person? If you are a religious person, which religion do you follow? You might practice one religion, your parents might practice one religion. There is a difference in the belief system as well. Religious diversity came. Economic diversity came, political diversity came. All the changes what we see in today's time, they are happening in past 400 to 500 years. From 400 to 500 years, changes are coming up at a very faster pace. So what happened is, 150 years back, they question, why is this change coming? From thousands and thousands of years, changes were not there. Thousands and thousands of years, People have the same kind of a lifestyle. But from past 500 years, we see changes are coming. So, 
in 19th century they started questioning why these changes are coming up and this study to understand why the changes have come is nothing but the subject for the emergence of sociology the first topic that you are having in the syllabus is emergence of sociology emergence of sociology in specifically to the european society so what is the first topic that you are having is why are the changes coming up in the past 500 years that is the first topic but when the sociology came for the first time it is not like how we are saying today like today we look sociology as a subject of arts all of you agree with that where do you study sociology subject arts in universities that is a kind but where it came in the starting period this is something 15th century where it got started somewhere in 19th century 1850s 1850s at that time they wanted to establish this subject like science but when 20th century came by 1900s they told no this should be called as arts they are debating telling it is a science subject 19th century they started debating it is an art subject that debate is still there so the second unit is telling should sociology be called as a science subject or it should be called as an art subject the second unit is in that one particular aspect the third unit is telling you are a sociologist you want to study what are the different methods that you are going to use how will you take out the information for example if i want to take some information from this class there are multiple methods i can question you individually i can interview you or i can just raise your hand if you agree if you disagree i can give you a piece of paper i can take that information i can take that information from the front desk i can read your form i can get to know about you so how to do research and what are the different methods of doing the research so the third topic is talking about what are the types of research what are the types of methodologies which are being used to get the data data is a very important thing in today's time all of the data is being stored the fourth unit is called to be as the thinkers that we have just now we have spoken right thinkers that is the fourth unit what we are having the fifth unit is talking about the society is divided do you think we all are equal do you think we all are equal no in the light of constitution we are equal but in reality we are different i am not telling we are unequal i am telling we are different how we are different we are divided in the form of gender men women third gender gender is different in the form of language what we speak that is different in the form of region where we belong to where you belong to i don't belong to that place where i belong you don't belong to that place region religion ethnicity language race gender we have got different types of diversity so the fifth unit is about how the society has been divided it is talking about stratification and hierarchy what are the different types of diversities that we are having in society it is stratification and then from here onwards we we have nothing but every institution like we have spoken about different institutions in this way we have got different institutions for example we have got economy and how it interacts with the society that is this is an institution we are having the concept of political system how it interacts with the society we have the concept of religion and how it interacts with the society we have the concept of family in the syllabus the word kinship is given for this kinship and family one is the same little bit broader concept is kinship this is what and the last is how the society is changing towards modernity technology is changing us modernity agents of social change education is changing us so we see how the social changes coming up within the society so this is nothing but 
the syllabus what you are having within the case of paper 1. Paper 1 can also be called to be as the Western Sociology. It means nothing but called to be as the Western Sociology. <coughs> Same part what we are having is the paper 2. <coughs> Paper 2 is nothing but called to be as the Indian Sociology. Like how we have spoken over here, the fourth part is the thinkers. Same way, when you want to understand the Indian society, we have got some Indian thinkers. Who are these Indian thinkers? These are not the British people. British people have given some theories, but for the UPSC syllabus, we have selected some Indian thinkers. So, one part. Okay, let me just give you a brief idea. The syllabus is divided into three parts. Like you have got 10 units over here. In paper 2, you have got three units basically. The first unit, in that we have got a part called as Indian thinkers. <coughs> Important thinkers like G.S. Ghure, M.N. Srinivas, A.R. Desai. Who is A.R. Desai? Same. We have got Karl Marx in the Western sociology. We have got an Indian Karl Marx. That is A.R. Desai. M.N. Srinivas. Who is M.N. Srinivas? He is a modern political sociologist. He has given some theories. Have you heard the word dominant caste? You might have heard. Yadavs. They are like a dominant caste in Uttar Pradesh. Have you seen, have you heard the word vote bank? Vote bank. Vote bank is a term that was coined by M.N. Srinivas. He has done some very good studies. G.S. Gure is the father of Indian sociology. This, these are nothing but the three Indian thinkers that we are having up. And then we have got the modern history of India. Spectrum what you are going to read is what you get to see over here as well. So we have got the modern history. In the part second, if you want to understand, what is this? Kaju Katli. This is not Kaju Katli, this is India. Okay. If you are taking the look at India, Indian geography is divided into three parts. Where are the people staying? Either they are staying in urban centers or they are staying up in the rural centers or they are staying up in the forest. So this is social class. People who are staying up in the cities, this is caste rural Indias. Forest is nothing but the tribal. So the second part is the Indian structure. How is it divided? One, two, three. These are the three structures. The fourth structure is the family system of India. And the fifth part, what we are having up is how the religion is trying to change. Religion is trying to. So first of all, you get to know the basics. The third part is the contemporary angle. Means what all things are happening today's time this is nothing but the current affairs whenever you are reading the Hindu Yojana Kurukshetra whatever you are using as a current affair thing you are going to use that in the third part the third part is the contemporary angle what you are having up rural India contemporary angle MN Rega scheme Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment scheme is there how it is creating an impact on the rural society in the case of urban society, we have got Swaj Bharat Mission, which has taken place. <coughs> Employment, skill development, how they are creating an impact. These social schemes, social movements are there. Any, tell me any social movement. Farmer movement was there, no, recently in news. How it is creating an impact. Digital movements are also there. Hashtag Me Too movement. All of you heard about? Hashtag Me Too movement. How they are creating an impact. Population and its impact. So, these are the basics application of those basics comes in the contemporary part of the current affairs so what is the syllabus of your sociology this is the syllabus that you are having up so the paper is divided two parts first paper and the second paper first paper is called as western sociology these are the 10 units and in the case of paper 2 we have got three units which are divided into sub parts what we have got we have got the indian picture indian classification Indian contemporary angle. So that is the syllabus what we have as far as sociology is considered. So 
who should not be taking uh, optional sociology my suggestion to you is if you are a person who likes to see things in like in black and white there are people who want to see things in black and white this is there this is not there like people who are coming up from a science background they always wants to create a, a what we call that as white water tight compartments three points one two three that's how they try to see if you are a person who is very much rule oriented you cannot take this subject if you want to take sociology subject you need to imagine a lot of stuff because in one class i would want you to belong into be as a family member i want you to think as a family member in another class i want you even take a perspective of a terrorist as well you have to think from a terrorist point of view to understand what how he is he is seeing the society so lot of imagination should be done creativity must be brought you are supposed to think how the society is there as a compartmental wise so if you are a person from a strong science background if you don't want to imagine you want to see everything in an objective form then this is not your subject so sociology has got these multiple parts what are the important books that we are having let me just questions that you have for me yes we'll discuss the books we have got mm. any questions that you have for me yes i like vada pav and momos and i love bahubali i like kgf 1 then kgf 2 any other questions yes Yes, I do. Yes, I have any questions. Sir, the point that Plato or Aristotle they also gave their opinion about society and why they why they are not. See, if you consider like that, every person gave an opinion. Even they have. That's the syllabus. What you are talking, it's more into philosophy. They are into philosophy. How the society is telling. That's why we are trying to deal with the society in a modern scientific way. When in the word scientific. we are studying everything in the form of facts we are studying everything in the form of basis and this is a new subject so we are including all the thinkers who have been there from past 150 to 200 years the first thinker was karl marx right 1818 to 1883 so the people who are there only from past 150 years those are the thinkers we are going to cover we are not going to cover anybody who is beyond 150 years so they are not covered in the syllabus and they are not even part of sociology as well they are telling how the society should be if you look at philosophy socrates aristotle they are telling how the society should be in sociology we are talking about how the society is right now we are talking about the present society we are not talking about a future society anything else any question that you have for me yes sir please my I have told you a favorite movie. I have told you my favorite dish. Anything else? My favorite color is white. Okay, every color will come in white, isn't it? All six, seven colors will come. So that is there. Anything else that you want to know? So yes, this particular optional it will be for a span of three and a half, three to three and a half months that will be taking up. We'll be having classes uh, throughout the week. and we will be taking up question and answer sessions as well we will not be starting with the first second and the third first second and third will not be doing that initially we will start the classes from thinkers part because i want to start where from where the sociology got emerged first second third we'll do it later on we'll come like this 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then we'll come 1 2 3 this is the pattern what i follow in the class because thinkers this is the most important part and i want to throw the most important part right in the initial time itself so this is going to be the hierarchy and
these are the important six thinkers these thinkers are there in the syllabus we are going to cover that first and other thinkers they are called as minor thinkers one small theories whatever is there we will discuss that in class i'll be giving a handwritten notes i'll be dictating the class as well so that is up from my side you have any further questions that you want to talk about I'll be taking Indian society. society. Indian society, I will be taking up. So, any other question that you have, you can get in touch through WhatsApp only. Please do not directly call. Put up a WhatsApp message, then I will be happy to guide. So, regarding the next session and everything, we will do that later on. So, shall I take a leave? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. बुक लिस्ट अच्छा बुक लिस्ट भी चाहिए This is 1988 computer. You have got two papers: paper one, paper two. Paper one, Indira Gandhi National Open University. Igloo books, basically what we have. That will be there. Igloo one. Then there is a book called as Harlem Books Blue Edition. This is what we are having in paper one. Igloo Harlem Books. There are some small reference material which I'll be discussing in the class itself. So these are the two books that you are having up, and in the paper two, we are having a book which is called as B K Nagla. To study the Indian thinkers, there is a separate book. Then we are having one book which is Spectrum, Indian history spectrum. That will be also be used in this particular. Then we have got. G Shah it's a book on the <coughs> indian social movements we have got ganesham shah and then we have got a book written by ram ahuja this book you have to study even for your gs preparation as well so same book we are using up ram ahuja he has written two books one explaining what do you mean by indian social system and then he is talking about the social problems of india this book you have to buy right now itself because you are going to study this for your indian society as well indian social system social problems of india ramahuja gansham shah for social movements spectrum history book bk nagla is for indian thinkers igno book it is ba material igno book ba material harlam bos blue edition that you have to buy orange edition is small blue edition is big so these are the books that you have regarding your sociological preparation and any other go and watch the youtube videos just try to interact with the subject how are you going to decide in the end the dilemma that you are going to have is two subjects that are having a confusion should i go with x should i go with y how will you finish the dilemma from your pocket take out a coin flip it and then you make that decision Take out the previous year question papers. Read the question and see: Are you able to even understand the question or not? If you are not even able to understand the question, also then you are not able to connect with that. 
thinkers don't do that because you don't know about thinkers take out paper 2 and try to see whether so one way of trying to find out is look at the syllabus look at the previous year question papers from 4 to 5 years and then you make up a decision every optional subject is going to have some interesting areas some boring areas as well so there is no optional in which you are going to like all the subjects that is the part and parcel of life you are going to like something you are not going to like something so syllabus previous year question papers youtube videos this is how you are going to get an idea whether this optional is your cup of tea or not so i'll see you in the next session